As the Fed plans to end its support uh, to the financial markets next month, U.S. companies have experienced a gold rush, racing to stock up um, borrowed money for fear that interest rates uh, could rise, will likely rise. For more, we are joined this morning by the head of fixed income syndicate at Barclays Capital, uh, Mark Bamford. Mark, great to have you here. Thanks. Uh, good morning. As well as Dom joining us in the conversation. Um, is the simple reason why companies are borrowing now because of the low interest rate environment? Is that it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's low interest rates and it's uh, pretty tight spreads to treasuries. So you look at single A and double A corporates, they're funding at 1%, 2%, 3%. They're in essence getting the same rates the government's getting right Pretty now. much. And if they compare this cost of funding to where it's been over 20 years, it's very, very attractive. Now, and, it's, it's the same reason, right, that, that, that homeowners went to refinance when they saw 30-year mortgage right. rates go down to 4 and a quarter percent. I mean, I'll give you an example. In the 90s, single-A corporates, many of them had an 8% benchmark. If I could finance below 8%, I went and financed. Those same corporates today are funding at 1%, 2 and 3%. So Is this all about refinancing for these companies, or is this something more? Um, so far this year, it's a refinancing story, not okay. an event, an M&A story. Europe, U.S., high grade, high yield, 80% of the industrial financing we're seeing is refinancing. Okay. Now, when it comes down to it, though, that, that, that refinancing that we're talking about, it really is driving a lot of companies like Google. Betty and I were talking about this earlier. Mm -hmm. They've never entered the public issuance of debt market, right. but now they're starting to sell debt out there to retire commercial paper right. or shorter term borrowing. Do you think that that trend continues for a lot of companies out there? You know, it's, it's been going on for three years, um, but at these levels of interest rates, we think it's going to continue. We think it'll go, and just to give you a sense, this year, we've had $400 billion of U.S. investment grade issuance. We think we'll end the year at a trillion dollars of issuance. That'll be the biggest year ever. The biggest year we've had to date was 2007. It's about $900 billion of issuance. So, yeah, we think there'll be another $600 billion. And to the point about QE2, you know, we, the question is, can the market absorb the lack of liquidity from taking out QE2? Well, that's $600 billion more of financing in the investment grade sector in QE2 is 600 to $800 billion a size. So I think the answer to that is yes. Well, you know, and, and Dominic and I, when we were talking about Google, I mean, the fact is, you know, the company paid triple A rated yields mm -hmm. as a double A rated company. Right. Um, what does that tell you? What it tells us, particularly in the industrial space, is there's just no net supply. There's this refinancing trend, but not new net supply. So when new names come to the market or events come to the market, um, investors are very, very interested in getting involved. So it's a seller's market. Issuers like Google, who got 1%, 2%, 3% coupons, they really can uh, dictate terms to the marketplace. Well, if it is a seller's market out there, you focused so much of this conversation so far on the investment-grade corporates. Let's talk a little bit about high yields, junk bonds, mm -hmm. so to speak, out mm -hmm. there. That's been a market that's been on fire, fueling, some say, an M&A boom, a leveraged buyout boom, all of this acquisition activity. Does that junk bond or high-yield financing continue as well? We think it does, and again, the same trends that we're seeing in the investment grade space, we're seeing in the high yield space, which is 80% of the market is refinancing, refinancing of bank loans and term loans, not new financings, i.e. acquisition financings. And if you look at the LBOs that are being done, they're not enormous. They're not 20, 30, 40 billion dollar LBOs. The banks are set up to use their balance sheet, you know, their bridge balance sheets, their overall balance sheets to do these deals. There just aren't as many of them as everyone would like to see. So that creates a great technical in the high yield market for investors to come in and buy. But, but in the investment, but getting back to the investment grade market, though, why as an investor would I be happy or, or, or want to buy into a company that's right. getting lower yields than they normally would right. uh, under normal market right. conditions? Well, we're in a little bit of a virtuous space, and we've been here since the crisis ended, which is issuers look at it from a fixed rate coupon. I told you in the, in the 90s, 8 percent today, 1, 2, 3 percent, so issuers are in. Investors. Despite the fact that spreads have come in a lot, reoffer spreads over the last two years, they're still twice as wide as they were before the crisis. Okay. So before the crisis, say a single A corporate would have been 60 over, pick a maturity. Today it's about 120 over. So investors are still getting a big pickup. Not the pickup they got on the before. back of the crisis, which was right. 300 over for a double A oil company. I mean, those days, that was a once in a lifetime event. This is a now, uh, still now a very they compelling. Getting? They're getting. Yeah, we're only twice as wide as okay. we were before the crisis, but that's still pretty attractive. Now, people are still hunting yield, right? That's the whole idea is that investors, right. because they, they're they just looking for that incremental gain above a treasury, a risk-free rate. That's Does right. that mean that they think that all these companies have no risk of default? Well, what's happening, the, 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 what's happening is that issuance is actually, to your point, investors are looking for yield and they're not getting it. Because the other big change this year has been issuers are moving down the yield curve. Because the curve is steeper, you know, you know, short rates are zero, 
Uh, we've got more three-year floaters, more five-year financings, and far fewer 10- and 30-year financings. So investors are even more anxious to get involved out the yield curve because issuers aren't providing the product. All right, we'll be watching. Sounds like there's going to be much more issuance. We have Disney, Google, all right. these other companies, J&J &J coming out. Thank you, Mark, for Great. joining Thanks, us. Mark Bamford of Barclays. And